Oh God! Oh God! We're all gonna die! We're all gonna die! Jesse. Uh, uh. Uh, tan line is. <laughs> <laughs> God, it's so messed up. <laughs> uh, uh, Jeremy, did you say we're good? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> you go, okay. go ahead. Sweet. So, uh, you guys entered the city, uh, and now I need to get my notes out that I probably should have had open before. Uh, you entered the city known as Emberfall. Uh, you looked around to try and figure out where the heck you were. You f discovered that you were on the world of Tataris. Uh, you met up with an individual by the name of Smith, and you figured out that the next thing that you wanted to do was to figure out, um, what were you trying to figure out coming to here? Uh, oh, you received went? a message. Yeah, you received a message, uh, from, uh, what's the name? Zappy. Zippy. Is it the Zippy? Zippy. I was going to say, I said Zappy, like Zappientia, Zappientia, like my god, yeah. but. Yeah, this is, okay, I got, I have this in my notes. Zibby <laughs> is Sapientia's cleric. She sent yeah. a uh, interesting message uh, twice because apparently an individual by the name of Lars wanted to talk to you, but could not. Um, and you were, you were told that you would find some answers in a tome, oops, excuse me, into the Winter's Gate Codex. Uh, you decided to hit up some of the local shops to see what there is to see, and you found the Topaz Tome Treasury, where you met Pipkin Wobbledo, and I believe I have art for this dude. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Free Shabakadoo? Free Shabakadoo! Yeah. So here is the Topaz Tome Treasury, and of course, Pipkin is a very, uh, uh, wasn't really paying attention, kind of quirky individual, uh, and then uh, you eventually found the Winter's Gate Codex, and uh, as you were trying to open it up and see what information you could figure out about it, uh, Diav noticed that you were getting plane shifted, and uh, they you just kind of went went with it. As yeah, we're like, fuck it. Shifted, <laughs> <laughs> let's go on an adventure. Uh, and uh, you guys found yourselves on the plane of existence, or planet, you're not really sure, called Verdantia. And you did some history checks and figured out that this is a green planet. It is literally in the name. It is supposedly covered with greenery, forests, trees, grasslands, everything. And you look around, and it's very much not that. And the frozen tundra at the moment. And so you decided to enter in a uh, cavern uh, entrance to, to see what there is to find. You saw some energy leaking from this mountain and uh, headed inside. And there you uh, fought a few individuals, some invisible stalkers, as well as some uh, tempest elementals. And there you met an individual that goes by the name of Gunrin. He seemed... Like, why are you here? He, he was questioning you, didn't really understand. And then you mentioned Parker Van Horn, and uh, they they said, well, uh, I, I assume you are an enemy of Parker, which makes you an enemy of mine. And then he attacked. And then and that fight. is where we will pick up. Silly four-fingered bitch. <laughs> Does he have four fingers? I didn't notice. Yeah. He's a Simpsons character. <laughs> All right, Maud Dib, what are you doing? I see you have a little thingy on you. Are you dead? Are you dead? Uh, let me tell you. Uh, give me like twenty seconds, and I'll One, let you know if I'm dead. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, beans! You're dead. 
No. <laughs> Making death saves? <laughs> yeah. Yay! Woo! Alright. Cool. And rot. Uh, oh god, do I have anything left she can do? <laughs> Soul rip. Always oh yeah, that. I'm sure, I'm sure that's gonna work out real well. Um, well, I did take away uh, his deific powers. Yes, you did. And oh boy, was he gonna do something? At the uh, start of your turn, did they take damage, or is that on their? Oh, that's right. And it's my body, not. Yeah. Right. So. Wow. What was that? <laughs> Sorry, my mic didn't cut off in time. I had a woman. Oh, no. So everybody in the black circle who is not a friend takes twenty nine fire damage. Okay, twenty nine <laughs> fire. No. <laughs> All right. No, beautiful. Yeah. And then Rot did a soul rip that'll absolutely hit. Roll damage, please. Like that sweet twenty. Twenty points of damage. What is that? Necrotic. What are these guys? Yes. Just double checking. Yes, yes, necrotic is fine. Minus 20. All right, cool. Anything else, Rot? Do you want to move anywhere? You're in, I think, a shadowy darkness right now. Oh, um, then in that case. I think this is Kalor's shadowy darkness. Yeah. Um, right here. That's good. I'll move there. Assuming they don't have opportunity attacks. Uh, you are in darkness. I think we've ruled this before, that if you're in darkness, they can't see you. Uh, they can't see through anything. Cool. Anyway, it is the end of your turn. It is Gundren's legendary action! And he is going to Frostbolt. Uh, he likes to... He likes to hit people who are down. Oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> that doesn't hit. <laughs> what the hell? That's so stupid. All right, cool. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, all right, so then this invisible stalker's turn is going to uh, do a frost blade against Bronte. Are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> He's gonna do it again. I swear to God, if he gets a natural one. I'm actually uh, immune until my turn. Because I cast, I cast the uh, immune to all damage until my next turn. So he hits me, but nothing happens. I hate this game. All right, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hitting Brad. <laughs> I'm hitting Montib. No. Twenty-seven to hit. Ah, <laughs> twenty-seven doesn't hit. <laughs> Twenty-nine, motherfucker. <laughs> all right, he's doing it. Yes, please. No. Oh. Natural twenty. Two death fails, please. I'm dead. You're dead, dead? Dead, dead. How would you like yeah. your dying breath action? Remember, your dying breath action implies that you have unlimited resources, anything that you can do within an action or a bonus action or both, and anything that hits is an auto crit. Uh, does this also count for rot? Does rot exist without you? No. Then no, I'd say it's only from wad and then rot disappears. She's she's sentient. She's got her own life. She's technically an NPC. Yeah, fine. Uh, yeah. Oh, I just assumed. Yeah, but she's yeah. an epic level one too. So. Yeah. You familiar stay if you die. Find familiar has a duration of its. Da, 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 da. It remains in existence for however long it, it manages to stay alive. Yeah, Rot's still alive. Hot damn. <laughs> All right, cool. Funny. You can't bring this bitch down. <laughs> All right, uh, I have a different thing for when she's dead. Uh, psychic scream. Oldie, but a goodie. All right, what is that? Intelligence, I assume. Yeah, everybody makes intelligence. Oh, of course it is. Not a friend. One, two, uh, one, two, and one, two, and then gun. 
He can suck a fat one. <laughs> Uh, all right, Psychic Scream, they're going to be stunned, yeah? Yep. Minus 52, that just saved all of your butts. Minus 52. All right, anything else? Do you want to say anything, do anything as your final action? Okay. To be extra morbid, uh, Blood Dev's going to pull out his old body and just place it next to him. And... Uh... Look at the other side. You know what to do. The fuck? <laughs> um, that's it. I don't know if I like this. <laughs> uh, it is until they do an intelligence save. Yeah, and that's a natural 20 is what they need. Except yeah. for Gunrun, he's okay. Fuck him. Ooh, you got rid of the temporary HP, but there we go. Math. All right, cool. Uh, that was that. And Kalor, who wants to play Kalor? Is... Is he? I don't think Apparently he ever leaves this roll twenty. He leaves roll twenty open all week. I believe he might be stunned from something, because usually that symbol I have is a stunning symbol. Uh, let me check. Yep, uh, Glacial Strike, this guy right here. So I assume he got Glacial Striked and then stunned. Until the end of his next turn, yeah. So he's, he would be losing the stun right now, and we could just skip his turn. Bronte, you are no longer immune, yeah? No, I'm not anymore. So oh, the end of my turn, yeah. Cool. Uh, fourteen hundred HP for the group. So everybody, fill it up. Dang, <laughs> poor Mwad. Don't get nothing. <laughs> Rot does, though. That's all that matters. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, spider, max health. I am. Give me a moment. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hey, Calm geez, yourself. Sir. <laughs> Before you rip rip a wreck yourself. <laughs> um... <clears throat> That's not what I want. That's what I think, y'all. <sighs> Jesse. Yes. I love you so much, but our journal tab is out of control. <laughs> Can't wait till we start a new campaign and it's going to be empty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is quite intense. I can organize it later. After my defense. I think I think we both know that that's not going to happen. And that's okay. You know, it's okay. I <laughs> thought I had... Pretty confident. Okay, I do. All right. Um, real fast. I'm going to switch the order of things. I just did. Uh, instead of using mass heal first, um, uh, I'm going to use my Celestial Tempest to uh cast revivify as a bonus action on my you no i caught it uh bonus action revivify mod you have one hit point uh and then i cast mass heal 
And you have uh, one level, no, two levels of exhaustion mod. So keep that in mind. I'm going to put a red dot on you so that everything is a minus two for you mod. Uh, your spell save DC, your, your everything. Excuse me. But he's alive. And you have full HP, so. Yeah. Um, action, bonus action, uh, and I'm not gonna move. I'm gonna stay right here. Alright. Uh, that made Gunrin not so happy as he's yeah. going to uh, first check the ruler, make sure everyone's within. He's gonna take a step forward right here and use the last two of his legendary actions. Everyone make a dexterity saving throw or take a lot of cold damage and have your speed reduced by 20. Wadib, please take uh. 80. <laughs> no. Yeah. Eight. Run it in. Uh, your speed is reduced by 20 still. 83. Alright, Mwad, or not Mwad, Kalor also failed, so we'll take uh, 83 points of damage, and I'll do that. Minus 83. Beautiful. Alright. This guy, let's just make a bunch of rolls. Here we go. Natural 20s, natural 20s. Oh, look at that! Yeah, <laughs> I... End of his turn. <laughs> I... Jesse, can I use my inspiration to make him re-roll? Uh, I'm sure there's a rule against that, but sure, why not? Let's yeah. re-roll it. Uh, back to this guy. Your inspiration is gone, and he is still stunned. Dia. Totally worth it. Do it. I hate Discord. No, it's me. It, it, Discord thinks that I'm not, is like I'm idle, but I'm not idle, and then it just like boots me out. Can he level eight one of them counterspell? Balls. <laughs> don't you don't you always uh, like do one at fifth level? Yeah, that's what he wants to do. Like some of them. <laughs> <laughs> He's at 8th level.
What was it? 400 and what? 38. Guess what this guy's not good at? <laughs> oh, God damn. I mean, it's really hard to warm up your joints in a frozen tundra, so. <laughs> so I get inspiration, like, five times over, right? Because I got... I don't so think that's how that works. Ones. <laughs> uh, he does, which gives him a nine. <laughs> With advantage. Oh, good. All right, Gunrin's turn. He's going to use. Yep, go ahead. Uh, he's going to first get back 50 temporary HP. He is heavy breathing, heavily labored breathing, as he uh, he looks to all of you as he says, "So." Maybe we can negotiate about this. <laughs> and at this point, he uh, raises his hand and like like a like a stop, like pause. And you all hear the shaking of something behind you as you look oh, behind dragon. you. Uh, nope, under the dragon, actually. The frost giant that uh, was very much frozen underneath the ice bursts from the ice and now uh, bursts through the ice wall and is going to get rolled into initiative. All right. He's cute, though. <laughs> and at this point, uh, Gunrin, what is he going to do? Oh, he's got a lot of things. Uh... Was that not an action? Uh, pause. <laughs> Back to Diav. Uh, I forgot about this. Uh, Master of Ice. So you actually had resistance, not immunity to, to cold damage. So that 83, you actually took 41 points of damage. So just keep that in mind. Divine Intervention, he does not have any more. Um, yeah. Diav, you recognize what he's trying to do right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, in that case, he's going to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And that's... He's trying to escape. He's trying to run uh, while you guys deal with the giant. And it looks like the uh, dragon also is released and is coming at you. Uh, Jesse, do we count the death as a short rest? No. <laughs> <laughs> that Good needs try. to be a t-shirt. <laughs> Spider, you see a massive frost giant behind you. What are you doing? What is the size of the frost giant? Oh my, where the fuck did you come from? Where did you uh, walk in? <laughs> I, I've been out here for like a couple minutes. Uh, <laughs> be impatient listening. Is, is it is it 
huge or smaller? Uh, bigger. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> All right, uh, so Spider, it is your turn. You have foresight. What are you doing? As you, feel... I am. I am trying to figure out. I wasn't expecting a giant to come crashing out of the floor. There's literally a skeletal body under the ice. Yeah, but that could have been there a while. It was <laughs> there a while. <laughs> it was been there for a very long while. <laughs> okay. Um. So. I'm going to. I think this should work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use. I'm going to attack. Actually, well. Go for it. Well, that's what I was thinking, but I didn't know if that counts as just the one time or if I can do that for everything. Okay. I didn't know if that was a rule or not. Go for it. I mean, it can't be that hard to hit. All right. Uh, you're going to need to do, pull out a calculator for this. So uh, it's AC is 20. So as long as you're above a 20, ooh, there's a Oh, already. my God. All of these are crits, guys. So, like, be shocked yeah. for all I of these. Know, but let me have this moment to say. <laughs> <laughs> it is a double crit. Okay. And then as a bonus action, I would like to... Okay, when using bonus action, make attack with... Okay, so I... Does that mean that... Wait, is this just for... Is this just... I will get those calculated, by the way. Sounds good. Um... And I'm also going to use action charge. <laughs> um... <laughs> Sorry, Dude, I'm I just so want to make sure right I'm reading something correctly. <laughs> Where is it? Is it down here? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um. Okay, well, we're just gonna. Okay, so I'm gonna do a bonus action with. Actually, no, I wouldn't be able to do that. I should be able to do that. It's not gonna be great, but I'll do it. So <laughs> that's going to be my bonus action, and I'm going to hit it again because I can throw it twice. And then I'm going to do Javanel Lightning four more times with Sniper Stance. <laughs> and I will get that added up for you, All Jesse. Right. Reminder that it's the 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 number is doubled, not the modifier. So anything that's plus seven is not the seven is not doubled. So just be aware of that. Just multiply however many hits you have plus seven, and then you can just subtract that from your total amount. That too. Yeah, that's probably an easier way to do it. All right. Cool. Wait. What? Uh, he'll type it to you. All right. What did? Oh right, I'm alive. <laughs> You're alive, baby. <laughs> Uh, hey, I'm just gonna do some what measuring. You, you have two levels of, of exhaustion, just a heads up. I'm so confused. Uh, I do, but Rot doesn't. Uh, oh, sweet. So I'll be Jesus. Uh, 60 feet fly speed. One less TARDIS. Fuck face. You're trying to soul rip a god? <laughs> He's not really a god. <laughs> He's not really a god right now. Mini god. It does hit? No hit. It does hit. Oh, oh wait, no, it does not. He's oh. AC of twenty six. Sorry. Here, hold on. I'm typing it up. No, I know, but uh, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out where this plus seven is coming from. That's your strength now. 
Okay. Because you have a 26 strength, or 24 strength. All right, anything else, Maud? Uh, yes. Uh, what are safe DCs on scrolls? Uh, if it doesn't say on the scroll, it would be your safe DC. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I would like to use my dominate person spell scroll. Okay. Uh, dominate person. 5e, 5e, 5e. FBI, it's 5D. <laughs> <laughs> the government is watching you. No, wisdom saving throw. Jesse, uh, it was DC it. 20, correct? AC is 20, yeah. Okay. Oh, I never this got the bullshit. damage for this. But... <laughs> that is a big wisdom save. Okay. Didn't you already use your reaction? Fuck you! Huh? <laughs> okay, uh, in that case, legendary resistance. That's one of them. Thanks, Faith. Okay, well, that's a burn spell scroll. Um, hang on. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 15. Forgot. Speed half. Alright, that's it. Ooh. Okay, you actually did something really good. <laughs> because I was going to use all three legendary actions at once. But I can't. So... Hey, me. Uh, what can he do? What does he want to do? Fight me. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> Fight me, you bitch! <laughs> he will okay, use but... one legendary action to... Frostbolt you in the face. Oh. Okay, but but. Thirty-four. Uh, what's the yeah. what's the twenty-two from? Vile. Dude. He doesn't have vile damage. He's not DFS. I didn't count for that. I don't know. So... We'll say above a above a fifty. You're right. You're right. Dude. Thirty-four <laughs> points of front cold damage. <laughs> Uh, is that to me or Rod? To you. Oh. Okay. You're the one who tried to dominate him, and he lost a thing. Uh, uh, all right. Spider, you were going to say how much damage you did to the Frost Giant? I'm, I'm still trying to do the math because I'm very confused where the subtracting the seven, subtracting the strength modifier is coming in because Cause you're, one of my notes. Your, your crits don't double your strength modifier, only the dice roll. So you're you're doubling everything, but then you're taking your modifier and multiplying it by the number of hits to subtract it for the the critical damage. Okay, but then it's saying that my damage dealt is quadrupled for the sniper stance. No, that's only for oh. your epic strike. Oh, okay, okay. Could I use that as a, like, is that an option as one of the dances, I think? One of the, one of the attacks? Well, it just says as an action, you fire one shot, then it basically is a crit oh, okay. and quadruple. Nope, so it's fair. just. That's fair. Nope. Okay. That makes more sense. Um, okay. So then that should get me, give me one second. I had it. Um, 352 points. Fuck yeah. Yeah. 352? <laughs> That's an epic fighter, right? That, yeah, that sounds... Drago would be so proud. 52. I feel like Drago would have a bit of a boner. Alright, yeah, he's almost bit? at half health. He needs <laughs> rock hard. <laughs> you guys would be oh. having more than two kids. That's all I'm saying. Well, technically we have three, but, you know. Oh, that's right. I guess we do have three. Alright, Kalor, it is your turn. Alright, still on mute from this the screaming child. Okay, so um, <laughs> as we're uh, chit chatting in our brains, uh, do y'all want me to go after the big bad trying to run away or the frost giant? I would say the immediate threats are the frost giant and the dragon. Rot has eyes Wait, on the big bad. I thought bad. the dragon wasn't attacking us. Dragon's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Uh, what, what, what size is that one? Big. 
Okay, so they are not big enough to put in my obsidian cage then. Okay. Go in the cage. <laughs> well, all right. So let's see. Um. Wait. Ah, I cannot quite get to the to the to the uh, frosty. Are you cool with the giant? If the giant takes a trip, there's a pretty good chance to succeed, but it's not guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. All right. So, Kalor is going to move to over here. Oh, wait. There we go. And I'm going to reach out from the wall and try to send him on a little vacation. Uh, I'm going to cast the level two epic spell. Where'd it go? It is... Oh, God damn it. Come on. Sorry. I had it up and then I moved the page and... No worries. Plain, we're doing a planar eviction. Planar uh, we're evict. Gonna, yeah. We're going to see if I can uh, success, succeed on this attack. Um, if I do succeed on the attack, he's going to go on a trip, and then he can try to start making rolls to see how long the trip is for. And if he decides to come back to this plane, he's going to take 10d10 damage. Okay, make your attack. All right. Here, let me uh, roll my spell attack. Wait, why is... Come on. Okay. All right. Um, we're rolling the cantrip, but this will sh this is for the... 38. That'll do it. Okay. So. All right. Yep. All right. So, on a successful hit, you banish the target, scattering it from across the plains. While so banished, that creature is incapacitated and can attempt a charisma saving throw at the end of each of its turns to end the effect. When the banishment ends, the creature can choose to return to an unoccupied space nearest to where it was banished or to a different plane of its choice. If it returns to the plane from which it was banished, it takes 10d10 force damage for each of the turns it was banished. Are you concentrating? Nope, this is instantaneous non-concentration. So Ridic. the darkness stays up. <laughs> Ridic. I'm putting a fairy thing on him because he is taking a fairy ride. Uh, mm -hmm. Alright, cool. Uh, how long, uh, how many rounds is it? Uh, let me double check the wording, but... I my... think he has to roll. It, it, no, it, it, like, it's indefinite. Every time, it, like... There, there's no limit on it. It's just every time it's his turn, he makes a charisma saving throw to try to end the planar eviction. And so he yes, just keeps on doing... 20. Yeah, he just keeps doing that until he succeeds. Cool. It's gonna be a minute. Or two. Come on, 5% chance! Mm-hmm, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Is... That's a lot of damage if he comes all right, back. All right. Oh, there it is. All right, so cool. that's one, yeah, we'll two, that. three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, Minute. twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, Minutes. twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. So it's hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Just go ahead and roll it. Let's just see what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> well, also, fun fact, he could choose just not to come back to this plane. <laughs> uh, he's a mindless wraith. He has yeah. no opinion. Okay. <laughs> he oh, Jesus. <laughs> I don't think he comes back. I don't think I, he comes back. I think that counts as an auto. That's an auto kill. <laughs>
He just what turns a to Harry. Fucking... Yeah. <laughs> uh... Cool. Kalor. <laughs> you say bye bye, and then what? <laughs> and... Okay. So then, um, what's going to happen is I'm going to step out. Uh, the, it, my poke my head out. Look at the dragon. I am going to use uh, thanks to um, the uh, spell singer epic uh, feat. I'm going to cast uh, true strike as a bonus action to hit the dragon on next turn, and then end my turn in the wall and take five damage for ending my turn inside the wall. Okay. Bronte. Well, how do I follow that up? Seriously. You know? <laughs> <laughs> By doing some god shit. Between... <laughs> god shit! <laughs> the chicken dance is god shit. That's can. Yes. That's my god shit, anyway. This is coming yes, after right? god. That's what I make my parishioners do on Sunday Mass, is the chicken dance. <laughs> yes. Also, yes, no dice, Kemosabe. Um, what's with the, what's with the uh, crosshairs on my guy? Uh, that's Ever your stance. stance. Mm, okay. Okay, we are... Um... <laughs> Uh, we're gonna cast uh, an eighth level guiding bolt at uh, the big fad. I'm gonna do one of these to make my life a little bit easier. Um, da -da -da -da. 25 uh, will miss. Can I do anything? Is there any deific things that give him a plus to his AC? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. With mage armor, no. I don't like fish for things. Yeah, you mean I'm trying to win the game? Correct. <laughs> uh, okay, that was my action. As my bonus action, I will just uh, quickly uh, kill this guy right in front of me. <laughs> just for funsies. What if you miss? Oh, that'd be great. Wow, Jesse. You hit him. But did you do two points of damage? God, I hope so. <laughs> It's critted yeah. anyway. All right. Bye bye. All right. Anything else, Bronte? Um. Nar. Nar. Nah. All right, True Diab. What are you doing here? <laughs> True Diab's gonna move down here and yell after Donrin and be like, "At least Nikolai had a had an excuse. He was a child. You should have known better." And I'm going to cast another uh, uh, Gatling gun at this motherfucker. And we're going to go ahead. I, I mean, I already did the math for that one. That's uh, 438 damage, my boy. And how would you like this individual to go down? Um, He's all in death. I, he's like trying to summon back his deific strength that Baranti stripped from him, um, and as he's like reaching out to the ice around him and the the creatures, um, the uh, the bolts of arcane energy like leave Alora's uh, not Alora, <laughs> Diov's hands, <laughs> and actually like tunnel into the ice and come out of the ice where he's trying to pull the energy from and just like go straight through his hands up his arms, splitting his arms in twain. And as they reach his uh, his chest, just his heart explodes out the front. Graphic. Well, damn. <laughs> uh, Very Jimmy's nice. been playing a survival game lately, so. <laughs> I need to let out my frustration somehow. Uh, 
Diav, uh, Simu Diav is going to walk over here and he's going to drop uh, one of his uh, squares on this big bad. I'm going to have that big bad do a, ooh, not a con save. Um, we're going to make it a uh, violet ray, so I need wisdom. Oop, not that one. Ignore that one. Oh, I should have had them do a con save. That would have been great. Oh, you said charisma? Oh, well, you already rolled con, so I might as well just do mm. the con. Oh, well. It doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Uh, it was wisdom, so we'll use the con. Um, Indigo. So uh, he is restrained and begins to turn to stone. He can, at the start of his turn, to make another uh, con save. Uh, if it fails three, he becomes petrified. Cool, 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 cool. So he's Jeremy? restrained? Restrained currently, yeah. Jeremy? Yes. Will any attacks against him um, affect that? Nope. Okay. Just checking. And then, uh, the, yep, good. He's just going to move over here so he's out of the line of sight. Yeah, well, the dragon uh, sees a spider and maybe a Kalor who's behind total cover. In the wall. Uh, in the wall. And spider, please make a con save. Uh, what's the range on that? That's a 60 foot cone. I think Bronte and Mwad are also going to get this. Yes, Maud and Bronte are also getting this. Can I not? Nope. Oh. I have an advantage. Take 57 points of cold damage and take half of that cold damage. And, uh, East Christian, uh, uh, anyone here afraid? I cannot be afraid. Immune? I ain't not. afraid no ghost. Um, th does this hit me? Uh, it says each creature that is aware of it. You are aware of it. Okay. Uh, is it a is it really strength really or a con save? Uh, it's a strength save. Oh, it is. Spell and is it considered mind effect? No, it is an attribute of dragons in general. Okay. I could be wrong, but I thought that Bronte specifically had something where we couldn't be okay. frightened around her. But okay. I could be. Nope, wrong. that's that's Bokash. Yeah, I knew Bokash. Yeah, I'm Im I'm immune to being frightened, but I can't help you guys. <laughs> Unless I did like a like a hero's feast before this, which I don't think I did, so. Alright. Uh Kaylor, make a save, please. Wisdom save. Alright. Here it comes. Ugh. So many scaredies. What are you frightened? Wait, why didn't it? Didn't... Yeah. There oh, wait, it's a DC 14? Is the yeah, it's only a DC 14. And Wad still sucked at it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I haven't used wisdom in so long. <laughs> Alright, uh, Kaylor, you're you. good. Uh, Sim Diav with a natural one? Yeah, the first one was Diav, second one was Sim. I just didn't change characters. Got it, got it. Uh, so then this one, right? That's you? Yeah. And then the Spider, it... did you do it? Yep, I already got my damage in there too. Did you make a wisdom save? Yeah, 27. 27. That's the con save. You need a Whoa. wisdom save. What was for, the... his, uh, for his Brighton. Oh, shit. Sorry. I thought... I didn't see that. My bad. It's okay. I'll forgive you just this once. Uh, 16. Why am I rolling doubles? Yeah, it happens. But 16 yeah, saves, so you're not scared. Oh, I see the 16. Alright, cool. Boom. Uh, Alright, cool. That's it. These guys, uh, are they going to get out of it? Let's see. Probably oh, not. Dead. Nope. Alright, back to Spider. All right, give me one second. I'm grabbing some water. Oh, uh, point of order. I just had to look it up. Uh, adult white dragons are technically huge, not gargantuan. Well, maybe he's an ancient white dragon. It says adult white dragon on a stat block. Oh. oh. I was trying to help Jesse out. I, <laughs> I appreciate you. <laughs> just trying a little, yeah. One moment. I love how the one dude's still playing hide and seek with himself in the corner. <laughs> I 
That's that Enigma mask spell, my friend. All right, so we're going to basically do the same song and dance as last time. Um, sniper's Dance, and then I'm going to use Frostbang twice for my bonus. I'm assuming you're hitting the dragon. Dragon! Yeah. Did Jesse get kicked? Then... We're gonna do some bonus action charge. And then we're gonna wait for Jesse to get back on one. There he is. It was an armor class of 18, so... 18? Yeah, I think you hit everything. Yep, armor class 18. Okay. Alright, um, I'll get those numbers into you. Or get them to you one second. Cool, you, know, cool. you know what one of the wackiest things about that sniper stance is? Is that uh, her range is quadrupled for it. So it's, it's literally meant for just, like, taking people off from a mile. God. All right, Maud, uh, how do you wrap this up? I assume Spider's going to kill this dragon. You're probably going to finish up these uh, stragglers. How would you like a, to do it? I have a quick question. Yes. So each round of combat is six seconds, correct? Indeed. How long would it take for the soul to leave someone's body? Do you want the the fake god soul? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I just, of course you do. How many seconds would it take? Rounding to the nearest division of six. Well, for me, I feel like it. It would take twelve. Is that twelve? Twelve seconds. Well, I feel like if you can revivify someone up to a minute then that means that their soul, right, would lingering. be there. Close yeah, enough. lingering for a minute. That would be my thought. So, I would like to have Rot lasso this soul. <laughs> Yeehaw! Jesse, that'll be, Jesse, that'll be 398 points. How would you like to kill the frost dragon, spider? No! <laughs> um, <laughs> She, well, okay, I don't... How far along in the petrification process are we talking here? Tozy wozy Because I feel like she would just be hammering this thing, and every single time <laughs> the javelin hits, it's just going to start crumbling more and more. And then, like, those last couple of ones, just, like, it starts just crumbling down like a, I don't know, like a glacier, and then that last one she hits, and it's just, like, all the perfect pressure points are hit and it just crumbles to the ground and kind of collapses and then there's just chunks of petrified dragon like skirting across the floor. Very nice. <clears throat> Love it. And that's right. my turn. And Wad, you wanted uh, to lasso his soul with yeah. rot, is that correct? Yeah. All right. This is gonna be a few. This is gonna be a few things. It's probably gonna be a, a challenge. Uh, what do you think should be the challenge? Uh, what do you? Uh, should it, it be probably... an arcana check? Should it be oh. a spell attack? Should it be uh, religion? Some, religion. I would say arcana. He's pretty familiar with souls and the process of dying um, it's pretty embarrassing that you did met that out loud buddy <laughs> um, yeah so I'd just be trying to circumvent the process instead of going to uh, what I assume is this great icy heaven and it's up my soul coin alright so I think, uh, but in instead of Arcana, would you rather it be a spell attack? Yeah. I figured as much. Uh, all right, cool. In that case, it's not going to be against his AC. It is going to be against his, 
Yeah, it's gonna be a DC thirty. This is a god. So uh, go ahead. He's you not can really actually bothered. just use soul rip, and it will it will do the yeah. math for you. He is not really technically a god right now. He is a epic creature of immense power. <laughs> can we assist in? This? Uh, maybe not this myself... round, but maybe the next round. Can I get okay. myself foresight? Do you have foresight? Uh, I have it, and I can cast it at will. Really? But it is an action. We were still playing. Uh, I'm checking to see if it's an action. Uh, yeah, it's at will. It's at will, but it doesn't say if it's an action or not. The spell foresight is an act. Yeah. Um. No, I can cast it on rot. What am I doing? There and you then go. Rot does the soul yeah. rip for advantage. Yeah. This familiar is too powerful. Seriously. I just Everybody imagine her like a little soul vampire at this. Well, it is the epic tier. <laughs> nice. It is the epic tier familiar that he's using, so. Yeah. I also have this spell. I just, like, never planned out a person, a creature. And if you think they're broken now, I specifically did not choose a bunch of feats. That could have made it way worse. Mm-hmm. Oh, I wasn't saying mechanically she's broken. I just, like, the fact that a little familiar can rip the soul out of a god is, like, should be terrifying to everybody in this group. Hey, I would just like to point out, he's not a god. <laughs> that, that's actually <laughs> Bronte saying that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was a god. Now he's Again, a god. incorrect. He was a false god. Created by difference. Parker Van Point. Okay, it's so do I put that on the labeling gun when I label the soul pointers? Uh, yeah. god. He's so, that limited edition uh, mint. Yeah. Wait, extra be. rare. Did you guys Wait, just miss that funny. whole speech? God yeah. damn it. Oh, shit. <laughs> I hate Discord. All right, what'd you miss? Where did I leave off? Oh, we didn't hear you all. Oh, my God. Are you using I... the app or the website? Ugh, I'm using the app. Use you need to website. switch to the website. Because the app is nothing but trouble for you. Well, I mean, it's only been, been this time. This one time. It's been No, it time. was... No. The last time it's we played, been... you were having problems. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's all just right, been cool. a while. Yeah. All right, cool. Rot. You, you guys watch as Rot lassos uh, the this ethereal thing around Gunrin's body. As her muscles bulge, she bear hugs this ethereal mist and begins bringing it to the ground. With her, uh, her wings are flapping like crazy as she is trying to wrestle. Has her hands, has arms, and legs all around this thing as she's trying to bring it towards Maud who has his hand open uh, with uh, the soul coin in his hand. She rustles it and finally gets closer and closer until the mist finds itself to the soul coin, where it goes straight in. You feel the soul coin get immensely hot and then frigidly cold, and then it does not move. Eagle bust. <laughs> Ike's toots. Um, Baranti walks up to uh, Mavid, taps him on the shoulder, holds out her hand, and she goes, Your payment for your life is going to be that soul coin. I have two other ones. No, that one. That is what we were here for, and I would like it, please. I feel like my life isn't worth this much. Martin, please. We were here for this. I have never asked for anything from you. Bokash has. I am not Bokash, and you okay. should not be dealing with him. I hate being a good person. I know. Hand it over. <laughs> uh, Baranti takes the false god coin. Uh, and she does pull out a label maker and uh, just types in false god and slaps it over the soul coin. Um, uh, wait one second, though. That does put Baranti over her limit of soul coins that she can carry. So she gives the four other filled soul coins she has. Good enough. Hey, that's, that's pretty good for Maud. That is actually really good. Baranti, uh, 
perhaps tonight, once we're back in the, um, the mansion, um, you would allow me to assist in making sure that that container is secure enough. Hey, I made that container. Oh, I'm you know, it's perfectly safe. I'm sh sure, but we've never contained the soul of God ourselves before, and it, it might be worth looking into, making sure that safeguards are in place. Agreed. We eat the uh, god. We become a god. You know, um, I'm not going to answer that because it makes me very nervous to sleep around you. <laughs> I mean, you're not a god. I don't see where that line of question would be concerning. That's right. I'm not a god. <laughs> okay. Can Just... we get out of this frigid hellhole, please? <laughs> not that not that it is um, super oh, important. Oh, Jesse's not here. Oh, shit. Hopefully he's switching over. I he's back. Rutherford, switch over. No, he's... no, I, I just, I like, uh, restart oh, okay. to see if that... Okay. Like um, not that it's a huge importance to us, but can I just double check, the horde that the dragon was hoarding, was, it was all bullshit. Ice coins. Coins made entirely out of ice. Right, so everything's, like, meltable. Not, nothing's hidden. Make an investigation check. What are all these rolls? I assume those two paralyzers melted. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, we just assumed you wrapped it up. Oh, uh, with... Suffer. <laughs> with the uh, With the investigation check, you are quite certain that this dragon uh, had no horde of its own, mm. and so it made these ice coins out of a feeling of wanting. Oh, poor baby. Desperate going for desperate measures. Well, uh, that, uh, is that all we came here for? Uh, I, I assume I know. Th I'm assuming that you know the planet's not going to magically turn back into a verdant paradise overnight. But perhaps we've set it on the right course. That is uh, my hope. Um, could we do like a cursory check around? Is this like his main, uh, like throne room or something? Like this is this seem to be like where he sets up shop i just wanted to like see if there's like an orb that's like keeping this place frozen that we need to like shut down or something oh well, he was uh, running down this hallway and there is a door i assume it's in there if there is one maybe we could check it out also what's on his person can we can we loot some bodies i would love to loot a body as you look upon his person, you find a book, as well as the robes themselves seem to be uh, of immense arc. Oh, wait, we lost him again? Of... Oh, no, he's good. Book. I do have a picture of the book. Nice. Ooh. And as you open this door, Mwadib, you uh, do notice that there is indeed real area. There we go. I like the birdie. Um, you do indeed see that there is a plain, plain old porter, plain old portal, uh, okay. to uh, what you assume to be a realm that this creature may have been from. Oh, uh, is it very cold in this room? Does it seem to be like open and like, like it's, it's like the joke when you leave the door open during the summer and your mom's like, we're not ACing the whole neighborhood. Are they <laughs> ACing the whole neighborhood? Uh, it, it does seem that this is like, there's definitely cold coming from it. However, it is not the cause of the world being, you know, uh, oh, okay. frozen over. Uh, uh, we should still probably close it. I'll have uh, Simi Diav pick up the book and the robes and put them in the bag for later identification. Okay. How do you pick up the book? Mage hand, Avi, Jesse. I knew that was the case, but I just wanted to check. 
Um, yes, uh, I, anything we can do to help? Um, perhaps. Uh, you know what? Haven't talked to my goddess in a while. Uh, I will use uh, my automatic channel divinity to close down the portal. And what is your channel? Say, like, what does your channel divinity do? You mean divine oh, intervention? Channel, sorry. Yes, my channel, my divine intervention. Gotcha. All right. With go. the divine intervention, you guys all feel a strike down upon the portal uh, as the uh, as a vibration, vibration, uh, sure. reverberation, something like that, uh, just echoes throughout all the chambers, and as it does, uh, the portal ceases to exist and the winds that were whipping around are no longer occurring god she is just so good all right shall we friends um let's uh, figure out how the hell to get out of this book i would like to try something if that's all right um sure i mean as long as it's you're not going to kill us or yourself i do not want to raise the dead anymore um, as, I, as I went at Madib. <laughs> Can we, uh, so we walk outside, Jess? Um, I, unless anybody wants to check out this last room. Up. Well, we might as well since we're here. Be very quiet, though. The, that one guy is still hiding. Oh, right. right, right, right. <laughs> Where could he be? I'm not going to run a combat encounter where we just <laughs> wipe the floor of him. Uh, what are you looking for? Yeah. Just opening the door, uh, seeing what's in. Oh, okay. Got it. Uh, let's see. Another combat and yeah. Crazy. All right. Uh, so you see an ornate obsidian altar stands in the center of this chamber, surrounded by a magical field of force. Uh, let's see, da -da 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 -da. reading, 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 and on this altar, you can see what looks to be a, uh, a parchment or note. Uh, it is folded, so you cannot read it, uh, unless you were to get closer, but it is, it is there. There is a piece uh, of parchment. Since it's an altar, could I do maybe a religion check on it? Uh, to see if it's any, like, of a deific. Sure, yeah, yeah. Any god-related yeah. things to it. I'd like to do and an then, art uh, on the, uh, the field. I, I was gonna say, I didn't know if you wanted to get close enough to mage hand to the note, and then I can try and read it. Uh, well, let me arcana the field, if, just in case it's, like, anti-magic. It is, yeah, uh, most certainly anti-magic, and not only anti-magic, but, uh, it's it's a field of force, and anything that tries to go through it is going to get zapped pretty hard. Nice. Dispellable? Uh, potentially dispellable with a high enough roll. Bronte, with that religion check, you identify this as uh, deific in nature, uh, likely from a great arcane user. Uh, you're not, there are no symbols of any god or, or deity on it, but in order to create such a thing, uh, such an altar and, and everything about this, it, it must have been created by an immense, powerful uh, arcane user. I have a feeling uh, I can put my finger on who exactly would be uh, powerful enough to create such an artifact. Does his name rhyme with Harker? <laughs> I would assume so, yes. Uh, let's see here. I do have a tier 3 available if you want me to use a tier 3 to spell magic on it to see if that works. Um, yes, I am holding my own magics for something I'd like to try outside, but, um, if you want to attempt that. I will. I will, uh, cast Dispel Magic at Tier 3. 
All right, that on... brings the DC down by 15. The Arcana check is a DC 30. Okay. I will give you uh, my super cool bonus. Which you didn't need, but... Thank you. You guys watch as the arcane barrier disintegrates and the parchment uh, just kind of uh, rustles in the wind. It doesn't open, doesn't Flitter. move too far. Yeah, it just it just moves a little bit on, on the pedestal. Um, and Diav, your passive investi investigation is pretty high, yeah? 35. Uh, and then Bronte, your passive perception is also really high. Yes. What is it? 36. All right. Uh, cool. Cool, 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 cool. My passive investigation is 29 as well. That's my passive perception. <gasps> Diav, go to the secondary voice channel. Shit, son. As you uh, watch this thing get dispelled, uh, you realize that there was uh, another thing in here that you may not have noticed yet, but something just triggered it. Uh, in essence, it is a, a sending spell of sorts, uh, able to go beyond the planes, and and it, it just it sent out a message. It, noticing it, am I able to try and counter or dispel it at all? Mm, it was like a last second thing. Uh, I would allow an Arcana check, DC forty five. Okay. <laughs> Since I have two Diavs, can I get advantage? I will allow it. Yeah, that's right. I gotta get a 19, my dude. 10% <laughs> <Ten percent> chance. <laughs> no. Any bonuses? <sighs> nah, no, not that I can give myself. Okay, sounds good. That is what it is. Alright, I will mage hand the note over when we switch back to the other voice. Alright. You're right, it is not secret to the stream, so you guys could totally rewatch this, but I know you won't. Uh, Alright, so... Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Diav, you mage hand the note over, and as you open it up, you realize it is not a note, it is a contract. Between Gonrin and Parkerven. Indeed. What, what are the Yeah, what are the terms? Uh, if you could read it. I will hand it to my good my good contract lawyer, but uh, you might find this interesting, Lord Dib. I it seems like a bunch of gobbledygook to me, but I'm sure uh, you understand the technicality. Cool. I read it. Uh, you can read anything, yeah. Correct. Okay, I'm gonna need you to still make a uh, intelligence check. And the DC is only a 25. Mm. Oh, I gave myself... No, I gave myself foresight um, for Rot's attack, so... Or, oh, no, I gave Rot foresight. Mm. You can recast foresight on yourself, if that will. Yeah, I forgot. Yep, I would like to recast foresight on myself. I will give you uh, plus 8 with my proficiency. So, plus 15. Go ahead and roll an intelligence check again. Oh That's my funny. god. Hey! Alright, instead of taking the psychic damage that was about to befall you, uh, oh, you <laughs> instead, <laughs> you instead uh, can read through and you understand that this was a deal between Parker and Gunrun. Uh, the deal was was that Gunrun was going to uh, provide Parker with the ability and understanding and the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the material needed to store deific energy mm. in a way that could be uh, uh, used for processes unknown to you. And in return, Parker would gift Gunrin a plane of his own to rule. That is the general gist of this contract. Is there it a, looks uh, like there are materials also that were, were bargained. 
Is there a gold fiddle claws? A, a, what was it? Gold fiddle claws. <laughs> there is not. <laughs> mm, I would like to tell this to the party. I'm not well, sure that's... what to do with that info. Well, it would uh, make sense to me that uh, Parker Van Hoon uh, created the cult that's siphoning powers from people. Um, perhaps the cult does not even realize that Parker Van Hoon is, well, the the leader of such or behind. Uh, well, it would also behind their powers. And also fall in line with the fact that he has sequestered the gods away from us, since uh, we know that they're in a plane of their own. Um, uh, yeah. Jesse, can I? Sorry to interrupt. Um, can I modify the contract to break it? Because the stipulations of the contract would still be valid, even if Gunrun was dead according to the reading, so we would have to break the contract specifically, I assume? Or has the contract been fulfilled? Uh, the contract has been fulfilled, and it looks like... Well, well no, I take that back. It has not been fulfilled. It's an, it's an indefinite thing. Uh, Parker would continue to be getting these materials, uh, and uh, Gunrun would continue being the leader of this plane, or the ruler of this plane. Right, but um, so in the contract is the extra dimensional, dimensional portal space that to store deific energy specifically created through this contract, or is it something that Gunrun was going to make for Parker? Yeah, or I'm assuming he already made it. Consistent, or he showed him how. Yeah, is it? What I'm trying to ask is. If so, the language of the contract seems like it is continuous, akin to a warlock's pact, where even though Gunrun is dead, the having the part for Parker would be continuous as long as the contract was intact. Okay, I see what you're saying. What so, are you trying to do? I, I would like to break the contract. So that Gunrin is no longer the ruler of this plane of existence, and so that Parker no longer receives these materials. Yeah, Parker doesn't get the benefits anymore, since it... Again, please tell me if I'm wrong. It seems to me that the con the contract isn't necess necessitating either party to be alive, so even if one of them happened to die, the contract would still be Valid. fulfilled and going on. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So if you want to break the contract, uh, what kind of a role do you think you'd have to do? Is there a lawyer check? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what would you base it off of? Would you base it off of wisdom, charisma, intelligence? Could be uh, charisma. I, I would say arcana since it is a magical contract to the end. Would you degree. want to do an arcana charisma check? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of question is that? I'm not even getting right. intelligence. Um, DC is uh, 45, so good luck. Oh, God. Can we, how can we help? Uh, I have foresight on myself, which is nice. Um, in breaking the contract... I'll guide. <laughs> I'll give him guidance. That's, that's all I got. Taking plus eight from... Okay. Uh... To make the breaking of the contract easier, can I change the recipient of the contract? To us? I was going to say my patron, but that would work better. Yeah, fuck your oh, patron. I see how it is. <laughs> we don't know how your patron is. That's true. I mean, well, we no. kind of We do know, but... Um... Well, I was just, it's easier to transfer it from one godlike being to another. Veronti <clears throat> coughs loudly. Oh, I'm sorry. Where is your spot in the Pantheon? Oof, duh. Wow. Okay. Um, I am going to cast Instant <laughs> Kill. <laughs> 
Listen, this has to be very exact. Godlike is not quite exact yet. Excuse me, I am still classified as a deity. Bitch. <laughs> can, I do an in, can I do an intelligence sure. check to see if it would work the same way? Assuming okay by DM. If it would still work the same way? Uh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, where did I go? I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, I put you all in this room because why not? Uh, I would say yeah. You could do an intelligence check. I'll put a DC twenty five to see if it if it could work. Uh, you have a twenty four, <laughs> and you just and defended my... your guidance. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> Can my Jeremy give, give you? Me? I gave Jeremy you gave eight. you a plus eight. Yeah. I could just keep doing that. You... That wasn't specifically a disparate, but it was a nice ability to do so. Uh, that would the defense was more technically. Bronte is not in the pantheon. I understand and... that you're just trying to save your future self. Yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> but I'm gonna let it burn the next time you're down, bitch. So. Okay. <laughs> you better start praying to Bronte. <laughs> uh, so, Jesse, would it work or not? Uh, I would say yes. You could do it with the DC of 45 for your Arcana Charisma check. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Yeah, let's do this. Um, so, intelligence, or Arcana is intelligence. I cannot remember. Did proficiency double the bonus? Or is it something else? No, okay. Our proficiency is plus four or plus eight right now. Right. Okay. So. So it would be your whatever your charisma modifier is, and in, in plus placement. Eight. Yeah. So it'll be plus sixteen. Plus three. So that's thirty-four. No, thirty-five. So thirty-two. 36. And then 44. plus 8 from Diavis. 44. Uh, nah. oh. Gotta be something. Oh, I would like to burn some soul coins. Ah, there, you there you go. Do not remember. I have a pinned somewhere. So I needed a 45? Yeah, indeed. So I just need a plus 1? Yep. Cool. I will burn two two soul coins to match forty five. Boom! You guys watch as Wadib scribble, scribble, scribbles, and uh, after maybe ten, twenty minutes of trying to uh, do some underwriting, and uh, also Rot is his paralegal, so Rot is just like conversing back and forth, trying to figure out this thing with Mod, <laughs> and uh, eventually Mod uh, stands up holds up the contract, throws the, the quill away, and just, what do you say? Eat my shorts, Parker Van Horn. Um, <laughs> do I have to sign that? Not in, like, blood or anything, right? Uh, kinda. <laughs> okay, well... It's <laughs> not blood specifically, it's more, um, it's more intangible. It's like an essence of the soul. But blood works, I guess. Okay. Doesn't have to be your uh, blood, just blood you use to write. Uh, Bronte will use her own blood and then use her long fingernails as a quill as she signs her name. Badass. But I just have a ballpoint pen in my finger. I find that works better. Meh. I'm not really no, no, signing a lot of... Not that it's, um... Of any surprise to anyone, but uh... I generally don't feel the need to keep it on me. Bronte, mm -hmm. your eyesight narrows. Around you gets you dark. The voices of your companions drifts away. 
and you look around and it's blackness once more until you hear so it was you who dispelled my magic I don't believe um, we've met. Oh, I think, I'm sure we have. Maybe just not in this lifetime. You feel an energy come over you. You feel power. Something unbelievably powerful has entered your hands more so than your spark ever could. And in front of you, you see, standing maybe 30 feet away from you in the darkness, is Parker Van Horn looking upon you. You see his disheveled hair, his half-moon spectacles, his wrinkly skin, and the essence of magic just emanating from his fingertips, his robes, his entire being. And what is it that you wish to accomplish, hmm? Oh. Uh, only bad guys play their hands out loud, Parker. Well, in that, but... if that's the case, my goal is to destroy this plane of existence. Is that playing out loud to what you expected? It's not surprising that a man of your self, like, would uh, desire a rewipe. I just don't truly get why. Is it just be to see if you can? You know nothing about me. It's a shame. I try not to. Honestly, actually, now that I think about it, everything I've learned about you has been truly and utterly against my will. So. Well, then take the will. Do it now. I'm right here. You feel this power surge up in front of you. You know that if you were to do a spell attack, it would deal roughly 600 arcane damage. But I don't think that would kill him, right, in my brain. It would definitely leave a mark. Don't take Parker. the pain. <laughs> Parker, I uh, appreciate it, but unlike you, I have zero desire to harm people. If you would like to, say, grow a pair and meet me and my group on the battlefield like many before you are more than welcome to he then walks another 15 feet to you about 15 feet away from you and he just says what makes you think that we aren't on a battlefield right now and he is going to do a spell attack all right here we go This is a plus 22, uh, so 28 to hit you. Uh, you have to make a spell attack. Uh, I have to? You, what do you mean? Uh, well, I mean, you, you are welcome to fail. This is the, the great 80s laser battle between two wizards. Oh, this sick. A, so this is <laughs> called the Trial of Arcane Might. It's a tier 3 spell, uh, and it is not found in the Hero's Handbook. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sassy today. I don't know what it is. I love it. No, so, you, keep, you keep doing it. Uh, while while you debate what you want to do, uh, you challenge another spellcaster within range to a duel of magical might. You you pour your magic through a conduit of energy into a single creature with a spellcasting feature within the range that you can see. Uh, if the target does not have a spellcasting feature or is unconscious, the spell dissipates harmlessly. The affected creature can choose to contest your power, causing you and the creature to struggle for control over the spell's energies. 
If the creature chooses not to contest with the spell, it takes 600 arcane damage and the spell ends. While the spell is in effect, either you or the affected creature can take an action to make an arcana spellcasting ability check contested by arcana spellcasting ability check from the other creature. If you okay. or the creature loses twice uh, of these contests in a row, in a row, the spell ends and the loser takes 600 arcane. Okay, so he rolled and he got a what? 28. Okay. Uh, and her arcana would be based off of wisdom. Uh, you could just click spell attack. Just do the spell okay. attack and that's the same thing. <sighs> Again, you don't have to do this. You can just choose to fail. And just take the 600? I think I'll if, pass. If you want. <laughs> uh, I will guide myself too. <laughs> Dang. That is the first success from Bronte. The rest of you all notice while Maud Dib is talking about his contract and you guys are trying to figure out what to do next, you guys look over to Bronte, whose eyes have glazed over as she is uh, in, a, in a stance trying to focus hard at the wall. She's literally looking at the north wall and, and is focusing intensely. Magic is radiating off of her at this point, and her hand is outstretched, shaking in intense pain. I'll cast uh, foresight on her. Cast foresight on her? Yeah. You don't know what's going on, you're just going to cast it. <laughs> when in doubt, foresight it out. <laughs> yes, obviously. All right. Next contest... Parker rolled a 17 plus 22 is a 39. Okay. You have advantage. <clears throat> that was close. Yeah. That was Thank so you. sexy. Um, okay, I do. I will continue my guidance. Won't matter. Do I have a clue of what's going on with her? Given uh, the pre-information. Pre so you recognize spells pretty much instantly, right? Yeah. Does tier three matter? No, if I see a spell, I know what it is. You know that this is Trial of Arcane Might, a spell that you had not known about until just now, and you realize what is happening. Uh, and you look I... into... Yep, go ahead. 35. What did he roll? He is going to roll an 11 plus 22 is a 20... Nope, 33. Okay, so I rolled a 35. All right, it's back into Bronte's court. Here we go. You got to beat a 39. Well, didn't he fail twice? No, he, he beat the last one. And it's in a row. Oh, wait. It's okay. in, a, in a row. It has to be in okay, a Okay, so row. sorry. Hold on. Jesse, you already rolled a 17 for the first one. 17? Right? Uh, no, I rolled a 6 for the first one. That was a – you won the first round. Right. Then I won the second round. Then right. you won the third round. Then, uh, what was this? You won the third round. So this round. is the fourth round. Yes, but it's in a row, reminder. So right, right, just, right. Yeah. So I rolled a 39, and if you win, I will take 60, uh, 600 points. You have to beat a 39. I'm casting a spell on Barante. What spell is that? Genesis. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, did it not roll? Well? So you got a plus two, and with advantage. Um, that's a thirty-five. I need to roll again. I'm going to use my inspiration to re-roll. Okay. So you're trying to beat that thirty-nine. Fuck. Okay, that's okay. It's still in your, now it's in back in your court. So now mm -hmm. I'm on the defensive. Here we go. One more. Uh, 29, you have to beat. 30. You guys watch as Bronte forces something of energy, an immense amount of energy out of her hands as this section of the wall just explodes inward for what looks to be like 300 feet. Just a solid layer of Kamea, Kamea. Feet. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> at uh, the very edge of the, uh, at the very end, you can see out. You can feel the breeze of something like a cold air, the outside coming in and flying, looking upon you some 300 feet away is Parker Van Horn. Oh, beans. It seems I I've underestimated you. That will not happen again. Do it, Spider. Do it, Spider. Do it, Spider. I'm going to throw my... I'm throwing it. She got, she got <laughs> sniper stands, but... I'm throwing it, and I'm going to do an action surge, because... Fuck this. If I see if I'm seeing Parker, I'm seeing blood. <laughs> but it also depends on if my computer there we go. Okay. Seems I has underestimated you. Something I <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Uh, you know what, uh, Spider? What might be easier if you want? Take that first one, multiply it oh, no. times however many attacks. That way, it, it no, would, no, because if, if there's a if there's a crit, then that they're all is gonna crit. they're all crit. Well, but when a crit like when a crit score already multiply? Nope. It's they're all crits no matter yeah. what. So it's well, just I would I, because you rolled a six. On that six out of six, I would take that first one and just multiply it out. Subtract What's his ace? seven. Yeah, I'm in essence throwing you a bone, and that way you don't have to like roll all of that. You could just math it all up really what, quick. What's his AC? Uh, his AC is 22 right now. So the 24 is going to hit. Okay. Uno Minuto. Sorry, my computer's been running a little. My She's a little sluggish today. Come on, computer. Come on, computer. Parker, um, okay. Uh, so, yep, go ahead. So that's going to be 344 points of uh, damage. 344 plus 600. Hot damn. Okay. Um, Shockingly, uh, and then I'm also not going that to. Good. Well, <laughs> and can I also technically do a bonus action to my attack? Yeah. yeah. Okay, then I am going to go ahead and use Frostfang twice because that counts. Come on, girly. Okay, so. I'm going to use a superiority dice too to get that last little oomph to make sure that one hits. Um, precision dice, or yeah, no, that should be a precision. Thank you, Dia. Yeah, okay, that'll hit now. So that's 26 extra points. Beautiful. All right. First off, <laughs> Does he look mad at least? I just want to get a reaction other than smug shit uh, out of him. Surprise, I would assume. The first thing that hits you is the laughter. Mm. He emits a peal of laughter that can be heard by all of you. Each of you must make a wisdom saving throw or experience a fragment of of the mage's insanity for 10 minutes. Uh, is that a spell, and is it considered mind-altering? It is not a spell. It probably is considered mind-altering. Is it considered a frighten? It kinda? I'm immune to frighten. 
Uh, the hallucination, it's a hallucination, alter the victim's perception of reality, fooling visual, tactile, and olfactory senses, and reducing its vision and senses to 10 feet, blinded and deafened beyond this radius. The hallucinations only alter the perception of things that already exist and do not trick the senses into believing something else exists when it does not. Uh, all objects and structures appear to be made of a type of food delicious to the affected creature. It's a <laughs> charm. I would say this is a charm. Oh, I'm also so in a charm. Be charisma? Uh, this is a wisdom saving throw, please. Well, I, I should be. I'm. I'm immune to charm effects. Cool, cool. So. Uh, I am also immune. Uh, so Baranti. I am also immune to charm. What about Kalor? Are you kidding me? <laughs> just he's like I just want to have a cool bad guy experience. Seriously. <laughs> I mean, we do have a good bad guy experience. Is Rot immune to charm? God, uh, poor Rot is just going to be losing her marbles. That's a good question. I it's mean, she's good a Fey, so she would have the advantage, probably? Mm, yeah, but it's a familiar. It's slightly different. That's true. Uh, uh, Kaylor, are you around? He rolled a 29. Yep. Oh, okay, I see that. Uh, the DC's 30, so Womp. Uh, I will. I will resist him. Would I really hit that? Yeah, no. <laughs> nice. like he is fucking <laughs> starting to starting to lose it. I'm like, get it together, man. <laughs> and you know the shadows are way know, scarier than I, that old man. I do love the fact that you just beat him at his own game and then turned around and 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 shielded your friend from him at the same time. <laughs> it's just poetic. Uh, at this point in time, rot. All objects and structures appear to be made of the type of food delicious to uh, the affected creature. All creatures appear to be uh, in the guise of the mage, though they still re retain their shape. All terrain appears to be covered in eyeballs of various sizes, shapes, and colors. All sounds oh, uh, is replaced by ramblings of the mage's voice, preventing intel intelligible communication. At the end of each of its turns, Wait. the affected creature repeats repeat a saving throw, Wait. ending the effect on the success. Yes. Uh, is, this is a saving throw, correct? Indeed. Uh, it is actually a 35. She has Why? advantage? Uh, magic resistance. No, that's not the right one. I can't read. Where <laughs> is it? I just fucking saw it. Oh my god. I stupid. It's called the Nanny Nanny Boo Boo Club. <laughs> oh, saving throws. Uh, the familiar adds your spellcasting ability modifier to any saving throw it attempts, and it also uses my wisdom saving modifier. Nice. You guys, at least Bronte and Spider, you watch as he uh, like flies off to the left of the hole and disappears, <laughs> and you hear a like a like a lightning. And like, you, like you're stop. aware, you're aware that this is that he most likely did a plane shift or something. I thought he hit the wall. Would have been <laughs> Just a really bad driver. <laughs> it's like he's he's able to do all of these things, but he actually just like can't ride Jess a animal. Jesse's like, you guys want to turn this into a Scooby Doo cartoon? Fine. <laughs> uh, Bronte, are you all right? Um, yes, actually, um, a little confused, but fine. Um, he seems, uh, pretty upset with me, but I think, I think, uh, I think it'll be fine, I'm sure. Uh, you sure, sure. Mod, uh, good job, uh, that contract definitely worked. I am the lawyer of the group, apparently. Um, uh, you'll continue to heal up till full health because of Genesis, by okay, the way. Okay, perfect. That is yeah. true. Well, uh, we've got our first taste of the Mad Mage himself. I think we actually did quite a... give him quite a walloping. Obviously, um, he'll heal by the time I'm sure we see him again, but... Spider, that was also fantastic from your part. Uh, I didn't know you could throw that far. I honestly didn't think I could either, but now I know. And she's just kind of like doing like little spirit fingers with her hands, like, ooh, what else could happen with this? <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea. It's like, you know how they say, like, 
uh, moms when their kids are in danger will get like mom strength and they'll like lift the car yes. up. <laughs> I just I just think I just think that Spider got so fucking pissed seeing that asshole's face that she just chucked the javelin further than she's ever been able to throw it. <laughs> just like Jesse, is there um I'm obviously not on this map, but just rule of cool, is there some kind of access to the top of the mountain from this cave? I'm sure there is in the main chamber where you defeated Gunrun. It probably goes all the way to the ceiling. I think I described that last time. Um, uh, Baronti, I'm, I'm assuming you have a way to get us home, yes? Uh, yes. Um, could we... I, I would like to try something if we could go to the top of the mountain really quick. I say let's do it. All right. Um, uh, I will make sure everybody is nice and bundled up in their warmest clothes, and I will add clothes to anybody who's looking a little lackluster in the warmth department. I just uh, keep close to my dick. <laughs> yeah, we're okay. just using him as a space heater. He's the main act of the group right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, as my, my Sorry, headset's go. about to die, I'm just saying, you know, my headset's about to die, I gotta change it out. Oh, and since I have to say, if I so I don't forget stuff, I did grab my original body and stuff it back into my chest. Assume so, yeah. <laughs> Got it. Well, I can't assume because I keep losing golems. Apparently, <laughs> you already have failed. <laughs> uh, as we uh, climb to the top of the mountain uh, and open whatever door there is to the freezing cold, whipping air, um, gonna look out over the frozen desert that is this planet and uh, converse with Simon Diav real quick and say uh, well uh, I suppose all my studies and fixing apocalyptic scenarios might come in handy um Everybody, I'm not sure what to expect from this, so don't hold your breath for a miracle. Uh, what I'd like to do, Jesse, is given my personal studies... Um, oh, shit, sorry. Uh, both Simul Diav and Diav have their, still have their Tier 3 spell uh, available to them. Um, I, can we both simultaneously cast a modified version of the tier 3 spell apocalypse like like a reverse apocalypse yes yeah to attempt to bring some order back to this planet give me 1 second In something, see where it is. I believe that there is one such spell that you are aware of that will reverse something like this. Is it miracle? And you are you are aware of it because it also. Uh, transported an entire city and all of its people back from a plane of existence to a different plane, and it is the spell miracle. Yeah, uh, I thought so. Taylor is going to do his best to help and cast his new cantrip bonfire. <laughs> yeah. So Jesse, I saw that spell cast and transport two cities back. Therefore, I know that spell. Yeah, indeed. I'll oh. cast Miracle. Oh, simul, simul did ca cast Miracle in case there's some backfire. <laughs> With a snap of your fingers, you invoke the most powerful magic ever produced in the known multiverse. You change reality to a new mode of existence with near limitless potential. In the known history of the spell, no casting has failed to produce the desired effect exactly as intended. A typical casting of the spell involves replicating the effects of any other epic spell as deific effects. 
and atypical casting must involve a desire that can be stated in 12 words or less. However, when you cast the spell in an atypical manner, roll a d20. On a 19 or lower, the spell fails. You take arcane damage equal to your hit point maximum, and you cannot cast the spell again until one year has passed. On a roll of 20, uh... the spell functions normally, but you can never ask it again. Even the power of the spell cannot circumvent this effect. When you cast a spell as a ritual, its casting time is increased six days. When you cast a spell in this manner, the, uh, you always roll a natural 20 in the spell's d20 roll on the atypical cast casting. So you can either snap your fingers, or you can wait six days, do a ritual, and do that. Would what I'm asking be considered an atypical casting of miracles? Very much. Uh, can I burn soul coins to either drop or help, or drop the DC or help the Oz? I don't know how you would roll that. I think I would, because you have a plus one for every two coins, yeah? Yeah, I have four, so it'll be a plus two. All right, uh, Dia, it's up to you. Do you want to do a ritual I, and wait six days, or do you want to I have take a your chance? question... Baronti, do you think Sapientia requires the soul of this false god, or wanted us to see what we would be up again? Sorry, the dog's barking next to me, so that's muted. Um, I would happily um, ask her. Guys, I just think there would be some poetic justice in using the power that was given to this creature. Um in returning the world that he destroyed. Uh, yeah, I will ask Sapienti if, uh, if the soul of this being is required, or if we are able to sacrifice it to right the land. Sapienti answers, I'm really starting to like Diav. He has some great ideas. Fuck yeah, do it. <laughs> uh, with uh, the fallen deity soul coin, it is a plus six. Okay, so that means that a thirteen or lower, or then and it fails. How many soul coins can you burn, my dip? Uh, depends. Do we have a bunch of people we can? kill really quick <laughs> no. if would would putting more epic magic behind this uh and and or non-epic magic uh help out or... so are is uh is sim diav yes. or re regular diav doing it sim diav would be casting this all right uh i would allow help from another character. Uh, so either Baronti can also cast Miracle, and I do have one spark left. And what does the spark do? The spark, I can cast uh, any epic spells at any level with my sparks. Got it. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can give you can give the sim uh, advantage. Rest in peace, soul coins. Uh, so you get a plus two from that. So plus six, plus two, and advantage. So you need a 11 or higher with an advantaged roll. Fuck it, let's try it. Oh, uh, also cast Foresight on Simino Diab. Uh, he already um, has advantage, but sure, that's fine. Double advantage. <laughs> double advantage. I might. Yep. I think I melted a whole half inch off. <laughs> you're still by the bonfire, like holding your hands over it, like God, it's fucking cold. Slow but steady wins the race. I will say that epic advantage is a thing in epic levels. You're right. It is. It is. Okay, everybody, hold your hold on to your butt. Holding on. Uh, Moa did pulls out a rivet gun and straps his butt on. <laughs> All right. Should I put on dramatic music? Mm. I see a 16. Yeah. 
Diav, could you please describe what happens? I think just poetically, especially since the uh, the the card has been played and the facade has has been melted away. Um, Sim 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 Diav raises his hands and looks over at Rayla Diav, and they both silently are are crying a little bit, sort of understanding what this could mean for them. Um, and uh, as he he just waves his hand, and it's almost like his hand is wiping away the snow, and Verdentia returns to the state it was before Parker Van Horn uh, made this contract. And as the last bit of snow wipes away, um, Simul Diov's hand begins to turn back into ice and melt up to his, up his arm, uh, and his entire body begins to turn back into ice and slowly melt with the rest of it um, as his archmage's robes fall to the ground, soaking wet. Diav will pick them up, press to digitate them off, and then put them You guys look from the mountaintop as the uh, the sky begins to open up and turn into uh, a, a bright and beautiful uh, sky with actually two different stars, two suns, uh, one much further away with a bluish tint and one a little bit closer with a yellowish tint like a normal sun. And down below you, you can see the evergreen forests, the glaciers just slowly vanish and so many different trees and plant life begin to bloom and express all around you uh, for miles and miles that you can see from the top of this mountaintop. And you begin to hear activity. You hear insects, you hear birds, you hear noises of life returning to this area. And it all transpires within about two minutes and 60 seconds and you hear a pop and you see the frost giant in front of you just explode in a thousand different pieces and then scatter oh. across the mountain <laughs> oh nice it's like um it's like a fertilizer for the soil new plants and all <laughs> just a wave of our hands just a uh, wave of our right hand back. i'll be right back julian is quick well, um, uh, plus I, if this was Star Wars, I feel like we would get negative conflict. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, what, that we drastically altered the whims of, well, I was going to say fate, but I guess Parker Van Horn. I just don't know that any I mortal being should have that kind of power. Let alone an immortal being. I'm right here. As am I. Shall we go home? Well, home-ish, anyway. I think we're you know, done I'm here. I'm a little tired of this stuff. I just want to go back home. Fuck this guy. Well, unfortunately, we're in a position where if we don't fuck this guy, then... There won't be much of a home to go back to. He'll be fucking everybody else. I mean, he did explicitly state that, to me anyway, that his uh, entire goal was to destroy the universe. Bad. For also, funsies, apparently. Totally kind of feel bad about forgetting this. Jesus Christ, how do you feel? I've never done that before. Are you okay? Alright, I'm back. Uh, done what? Oh, the, the contract thing. I actually feel yeah. fine, to be honest. I actually, strangely, I feel stronger than ever. Bleh! <laughs> I started vomiting <laughs> uncontrollably. <laughs> okay, so, what are you all doing after this? Uh, we are teleporting our sweet little asses home. I'd like to go to sleep. I was I gonna say no I'd like to nap. I have no Please. thoughts. And teleport Please, but actually back into the bookshop. <laughs> or uh <laughs> to the room that we have prepared and we can jump into the mansion. There you go. 
or plane or shift. I can cast either, whatever one you think we need. Uh, plane or shift. Uh, I, this is not just another planet, but another dimension, correct, Jess? Uh, correct. Yeah. You guys plane or shift. You head back uh, to the location that you once were. You see Pipkin uh, Wobbledo just reading. kind of still reading. <laughs> uh, looks at you all and just says, Oh, I didn't realize you were still here. Sorry about that. Did you need anything? No, thank I want you, a sir. nap. I want a uh, nap and a hot beverage. Uh, I cannot provide either of those for you, but uh, there's an inn just down the road. If you uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I will continue. I will take the book too. I'm assuming its magic is probably inert at this point, but are, are you going to pay for that? No. With the shit we went through, that just walks out. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I'm just uh, taking it. That that is ten gold shillings. Listen, my good man. That's like a, you can... a piss here. It really is. Either, yeah. uh, either throw, we can I'm gonna pay throw for ten, it. I'm going to throw ten gold on his no, desk no, no. and I'm going to no, walk no. out. No, no, <laughs> no. no. It's about what? the principle of the thing. Listen, <laughs> buddy, we're taking this book from you. We just got transported to another plane. I'm sure you would love to have other customers disappear on you. And I'm sure your bookshop would love the reputation of that. I think if we just take it off your hands, it would totally be fine. Make a persuasion check. Yeah. No. Oh my god. You gotta be kidding me. Ten gold is ten gold. Mm. Pay up. I'm calling the god. God, I, I just... smack ten gold on his desk and I leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna like just grumpily like walk out of there. Just like. I'm cold. I want food. Let's go. Uh, Taylor starts hysterically laughing at this situation. Because mm -hmm. that guy does not know how close he just came to potentially dying if I was in a worse mood. <laughs> and then Spider walks back into the building, grabs everyone, and we're going. I was like, I'm like, I'm, I'm still laughing. I'm like, these threads that call the guard. I'm like, <laughs> he All might right. have pissed us off, but we are still guests here. Let's go. I know it would have been rude, but still to call the guard. <laughs> what are the guard gonna do now? Yes, it does. All right. So you guys head back to, uh, I assume, the inn as well as Diav's mansion. Yeah, I think uh, as soon as we open the door to the mansion, Diav waves his hand and uh, just a table full of, uh, you know, dripping turkey legs and, and pies and uh, um, hot chocolates and everything just appears. But he, like, gestures towards it and just walks straight to the back. Uh, as you go into the back, you see Seraphor uh, reading uh, like a really thick, thick book. Like it is immense. Uh, his eyes are really wide, and uh, you can you can tell he's like really enamored with it. And he he looks up and he sees you, and he 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 goes, "Oh, uh, Sir Professor Master Diab!" Uh, so good. And he closes the book. And you realize that there is something between the pages of the book uh, that is not part of the book that he just uh, like threw off to the side. Like, oh, I didn't realize you'd return so soon. Uh, mage hand, your... mage hand the book. <laughs> you mage hand it over, uh, and you open up to that page. And it's smut. <laughs> what was the book that he was re pretending to read? Was uh, it one of the probably... ones on magical ethics? Probably, sure. Why not? <laughs> I am going to thrust the book into his chest and I'm just going to look at him and say if you do not take this seriously I will find a way to strip you of any magical power you could ever possess I, I was just taking a break I'm so sorry it won't happen again Breaks I'm going to chime in he's not joking breaks are fine you must 
But you must take this seriously. Of course. Of course. I will. Um, what did you find, uh, on your adventure? We found... about as much danger as we can reasonably assume there is. If you'll excuse me. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, can I do, like, a retroactive insight check on Diablo when he left, since Mwadib does not eat food. Not specifically because he doesn't eat food, but just because he thought it would have been weird that Diablo just left. Okay. Diablo, do you approve? Yeah, I mean, that's an investigation. Ow, beans. <laughs> <laughs> The eyes look so similar. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's not really hiding anything. He's just... I think he's... You you feel there's sort of a contemplative nature of the... The level of power that was not only shown between Baranti and Parker Van Horn, but that he himself was able to manipulate an entire world with. And I think that he's... He's just sort of contemplating the ramifications. Um, and uh, overnight, I will attempt to identify the grimoire and the uh, uh, the robes. I will use. A true Archimedes and cast identify through him, and Archimedes will. Talk. Okay, uh, you barely even have to uh, do an identification before the grating grimoire goes. God, your hands are oily. Ugh. Have you ever had I don't know washed your hands or something? I could wash your mouth out with soap. I'd figure out a way. Good luck finding a mouth. I'll, I'll, I'll make you a mouth. Well, finally, then I could maybe... Uh, explicit, explicit, explicit. <laughs> oh. See, yeah, I was just, like, looking over at the magical furnace that he's built in this room, just like... Hmm... Go for it. Please, take me out of existence. I would appreciate it. Uh, I identify goes off. <laughs> Could always hand it to Ma Dib to see if he can suck a soul out of a book. Should be much more painful. <laughs> hey, I got secrets. If you want to learn anything, you gotta treat me nice, right? Uh, and what would you like? A light dusting of your paper? Actually, I would like you to, uh, write some nice spells in me. And where do these spells go? In my pages? I don't, I don't know. You're the, supposed to be the smart guy. I mean, who besides the reader has access to those spells? Me? And who are you? The Grating Grimoire. Nice to meet ya. The Grating Grimoire is a thing, it's not a name. Who are you? The Great and Grimoire. All right, Gary, listen up. Um, <laughs> right, spells. Wait, say that again, Jer. <clears throat> Why is it you wish me to write spells in you? I mean, it's kind of the whole point, isn't it? Get as many spells as you can, become more powerful, and then... It's always been what I needed, though. But the more you put in me, the more I put out, if you get my meaning. I mean, that you is my swear, experience. You swear you saw the gem that's encrusted in the center of this book, like, wink. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I am I may or may not have use for you, someone in my party is, but I'm not going to give you up uh, to anyone without knowing what you do, so... 
should I uh, be able to garner that information, perhaps I can make use of you and give you what you want. Well, let me just, uh, I'll be able to help you, I promise. But we're going to have to come to some sort of an arrangement. Yes, the arrangement is you tell me what you are and what you do, and then I may find use for you. Or well, give me a spell, and then I'll tell you who I, what I am and what I do. I give it the identify spell. I have it. Page 37. Boring. Well, you didn't say give you a spell that you'd never had before. Ooh. You see him, uh, like again, if he's annoyed, like as if he's annoyed, and he just says, "Fine." Uh, so what am I? Well, I'm a grimoire. I hold spells, duh. And what am I for? Well, I was formerly owned by the Parker Van Horn. How formal? give or take a couple hundred years. Right. And you, uh, contain spells of his within you. Supposedly. That's a lot of questions. I think I'm gonna need another new spell. <laughs> uh, I gave him Bane of Bashar. What is that? It's from the, uh, Blackstaff's Book of a Thousand Spells. Seems interesting. All right. What's your question? Um, what, uh, what level of, or what uh, circle of magic of spells do you contain? Yes. Like what level of spells, Jesse? I'm trying to be roleplay. <laughs> uh, you, you can even flip through, and you can see that the, it, there are a plethora of spells from. You know, cantrips all the way to tier three spells. Uh, immense spells. And so what is, what ex precisely is the deal here? Is it always a spell for a spell? Or that seems rather weighted in your persuasion. Well, if you want information... I got that information. I've, I've seen a few things. I've been around a, a while. All right. Well, um, I will bring that up to the group, and if they decide that they want information about Parker Van Horn from a talking book, then uh, perhaps we can all contribute something to you. Oh, you'll bring it up with the group, will ya? A powerful wizard like you has to ask his companions to see if he can do some things? Aww. You see this? I pull out. Uh, I pull a pillow out of a pillowcase. It's called the bag of muffling, and I want to put it inside. <laughs> um, I I will identify the robes as well. Uh, these robes are the uh, uh, Gunrin's robes, and I will have stats on them hopefully by this week. They are archmage robes, but specifically catered for cold magic. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. All right. Uh, uh, I will put these foolish things away and uh, do my normal uh, in my mansion routine. Okay. Uh, before Julian begins to yell even more, uh, what is your next goal? Where are you guys headed to so I can prep it? Did we want to hit the mines? Mm -hmm. Down with that. Was okay. I mean, I'm down with whatever. I just... Was there something specific happening in the mine? We're Getting looking for the, the her ore. Oh, make, yeah. And we had some thoughts about that, Jesse. All right. So void steel ore. I'm going to write this down real quick. Uh, void steel ore within the deepest... Parts of the Ember Fall mines. Cool. 
Anything else? I think that's that's actually plenty. I already know I'm probably going to do for that. I think probably uh, after that we'll be following up on the cold. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, Alright. Cool, cool, cool. And any questions, comments, or concerns? I see Julian is moving. is making you nervous. Uh, no. And we level up. Uh, no. Damn it. And, <laughs> Come on, we just did a bunch of powerful stuff. Yeah, and you're gonna have to do it again when you go <laughs> to the deepest part of Emberfall. He's got a he's got a temper us. Um, can you send me the that Archmage spell since now I can know how it works? Oh yeah, yeah. I will send that to you. Cool. That's it for me. All right. Well, thank you all for listening. If you are listening. And uh, hope you like and subscribe. And good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.